Jackson Radio Show. Welcome back, everybody. Kevin Jackson. It's Kevin Jackson Show. KJRadio.com. I got to tell you, things are looking really bad for Steve Bannon. Wow. This is a guy who was, you know, he had left the Trump administration. He was really on a high. And he ruined it. I mean, look, I, I don't, Don, Donald Jr. said he squandered it, and he's exactly right. But I can't tell you the, I, I don't even know how you could get into the head of a guy like Steve Bannon to say, I'm going to, I'm going to backstab Trump for my own personal benefit. Look, the, the, the way you gain favor with people when you work for him is you say, look, I, I get it. We, we, everything that we do in this company isn't run on, you know, we don't run everything at hundred percent efficiency. We do the best we can. And you come in to help an organization, whether it's a company or organization, whatever you come in to help and you're going to see the, the dirty laundry. I don't mean, you know, cheating and stuff like that. I'm talking about, we're not efficient. Look, I, I was a management consultant to the largest companies in the world. I promise you, if, if I told you all the crap that went on in some of these companies that you'd go, why would I invest in them? But you, that's what they bring people like me in is to come in, look at the situation because you come in with fresh vision and you then say, let's fix this, that, and the other. And you make it a little bit better. Somebody else with a different set of experiences can do the same thing. That's why many times they work with multiple consultants, multiple management consultants. So that's okay. But when you leave, yeah, and, and you know, honestly, I think in our paperwork there were NDAs. But, you know, without an NDA, I'm not going to go somewhere and say, oh, this is a problem. When I would go into a, a company, and, and, and it's funny, I'll just give you a little management consultant, consulting. So let's say I've got two large companies that are in similar businesses and I've worked with one and, and changed, you know, changed them around, made them profitable. Well, guess what? The competitor goes, well, they were using, you know, Kevin Jackson. So they call you in. And the first thing they do is, well, well, you know, so Kevin, tell us what you did over at company A. And you say to them, why would I do that? Well, I mean, we just know you did a great job over there and that's why we want you over here. Well, then fine. You, you understand it. I did a great job over there. And that's all you need to know. I went in, I identified their problem areas and I'll do the same for you. But if you think for one second, I'm going to tell you, oh, well, you know, they had inefficiencies in their supply chain and they really didn't understand their customers and blah, blah, blah. And of course, they had far too much, you know, uh, product in their work and process that they didn't need and they could have been, and done it a better strategy around just in time delivery or whatever. No, I'm not going in any detail. I will tell you nothing about them. And that's how you win business. Because it wasn't a test of how good are you. They, they know how good I was. I turned them around. I saved them $1.7 billion annually or whatever. What they want to know is, can you keep your mouth shut? That's what they want to know. I'll, look, tell me your secrets. I'm not telling anybody. When I, would, when I would do proposals, I'd say, yeah, so I had a situation with a company that had this type of scenario with their inventory or inventory returns or they, you know, reverse logistics, whatever. But I would never give you a name. I'm talking about just in general. And I wouldn't give you enough detail to where you could figure out who it is. It was strictly, here's a problem we faced that's similar to yours and how we were, you know, how I'm going to fix it. And I was able to bring this much to the bottom line, recurring revenue, not just a one time fix, recurring revenue. So you can put this on the bottom of your bottom on your you can put this at the bottom line every every quarter. Right. That's the way you talk. But you're not getting a secret out of me. You could give me sodium pentothal. You could waterboard me or whatever you want. I'm not telling you anything about my client. And that's how you gain loyalty. And that's why people like Donald Trump put you in their inner circle. And that's why I was, I don't know anything about uh, Bannon in that respect, but I don't understand why this guy would squander that. And even when you're out of the inner circle, let's say you didn't fit Donald Trump, his loyalty is, look, you weren't very good, but we're going to leave it amicably and you go along your way. I've given you the opportunity to make, make yourself good. Think about this when the apprentice People went on that show and they'd get kicked off. But even after you were off the show, because you were on it, you could you could 
you know, go write a ticket here. You could say, hey, I wrote a book about my deal on The Apprentice. And as long as you didn't air any dirty laundry about Trump, and I'm not saying dirt. I'm saying just, oh, I wasn't, you know, he was whatever. If you didn't get all petty, he didn't go, go forth and multiply. But if you attack him, he's going to attack you. End of story. Because the rule is you have the ability to go earn now. Anybody associated with with the Donald Trump campaign is instantaneously on the speaking circuit, making a lot of money and things are going well. Instantaneously run with it. Steve Bannon left. People thought the man was a guru. Trump wasn't going to going to deny it. He would just like if, if Steve Bannon had written a book saying, you know, yeah, I was part of the team. Trump's a genius. You know, I felt like I contributed, blah, blah, blah. He could write a book at a $10 million advance. Good, good as gold. He, in fact, Donald Trump would bring him in and, you know, that it would be mutual admiration society, even though Donald Trump would have said, you're not good for my team. He'd still hold you close. You know, he'd, he'd, he'd allow you access. Steve Bannon has cut the umbilical cord. He will never repeat, never be back in the good graces of Donald Trump. It's one thing, folks. It's loyalty. It's the reason why. As much as a, and I'm, I'm going to describe myself as a jerk. I don't honestly believe I am, but I, but I'll, I'll go with what I, you know, some people may perceive. I look, here's my thing. You will take me or leave me. I'm not changing my personality for you. If I make you feel weak, so be it. I'm not going to go, Oh Jesus, this person feels weak when I'm around them. So I need to change. I'm not changing anything. I'm there to grow you as a person. I mean, if you want to do that the same way, I'll look at your qualities and go, wow, that's a great quality in that person. I want to adopt that, but I'm not going to feel weakened by it. I'm not going to, wow, that person's really good, you know, marketer. He really knows that. Oh, geez, I'm going to stay away from him. He's just such a jerk because, you know, he's just, no, I'm going to take that and go, wow, that's a good quality. I'll look at that as a quality, but I'm not going to, and I'm not changing the way I am unless it's changing myself for the better. And it will be because I want to do it. That's the way I see it. So, that, that when I look at the way, uh, you know, how what people want, what I want from my team, for example, I want loyalty. It doesn't mean you're not going to go on your merry way. And it doesn't. But I'll freely admit we've made so many mistakes in running this organization. It's crazy. I, I say it up front. That's why you bring people in to help it, to improve it. For the record, if you want to be part of this team, we would love to have you because we make mistakes. And we have fun making mistakes together because you know what we managed to do in the last nine years? We've managed to actually make a difference, to grow it in spite of those mistakes. And that's what Trump is saying. I'm going to make mistakes. I'm not worried about that. I want loyal people who are going to help me grow this because I know what we can accomplish. And Bannon abandoned that. I don't get that. He's smarter than that. At least I thought he was. Now he's out there begging for buttermilk. You know, look, this is not going to end well for him. I'm telling you. And the dude has suddenly become toxic. And I feel I feel sorry for him. Back in a bit. This is the Kevin Jackson Radio Show.